So this is a little video on how to engrave metal or other stuff on a CNC router. I'll just give you some of the uh, tips that I've learned in uh, messing around with this. So first of all, the most important thing with engraving, I think, is getting a flat surface, especially whenever you're just trying to etch metal. This is a stainless steel, like it's pretty tough and you could easily snap a bit if you try to engrave too deep. So it's very important that your surface is flat because if you touch down and you think you're good on your start point, then by the time you get to the other side, even if it's off by say 10 thousandths of an inch, I mean, that's gonna look a lot. First of all, if you're using a V-bit, it's going to, the text is gonna get wider and you might actually damage the bit. So it's very important that you're using a flat surface and you, you, you can see that first, this, the first step I took was to resurface my entire router table. And I did that just using a quarter inch bit. I probably could have used a bigger one, but you know, a little bit of patience and it'll get done. And then secondly, I made from a little piece of scrap, a pocket for the exact shape that I was gonna be using so that I could take my sample and drop it in. And I had to experiment with the size a little bit, but once you get something that works, Make sure it's clean in there. All right, you should just drop right in. And this may not be the one that I used. Let me try my other one. I think it will probably, it's not a bad thing to, if it's to be snug. In fact, I would probably rather it be a press fit because I could always drill a hole in the back and push it out. What you don't want is to have your sample sliding in here back and forth as the tool is engraving. So what this does is it creates a milled flat surface and barriers to keep your part in. Obviously, if you're engraving a very large sheet, then that's gonna require a different type of fixturing than little parts like this. For that, you might use it's a lot of tape or spray adhesive. Just to give you an idea of what I'm using, uh, I bought some special V bits for milling PCBs, those tiny traces on circuit boards. These have a narrow 0.5 millimeter tip and they're quite fragile. And in not knowing what I'm doing, just experimenting, you break, I break a few things. So this is one where the tip cracked off, but thankfully I had quite a few of them. So obviously um, the, the thinner the point is, is the uh, more narrow t uh, lines you can create and more detail or smaller text or whatever. But if you prefer not to get such a little tool, uh, you could get a larger view bit and your text would stand out a little bit more and uh, you could cut a little bit deeper. So this was a, a example of something that I did. It's uh, about 10 thousandths of an inch in the program, it's just 10 thousandths of an inch, but that, that's not an actually 10 thousandths of an inch deep cut. Um, now, you can see it's a little bit stronger in, in visibility towards the top of the W's, and the bottom is more faint, and I think that that's because the center was a little bit higher, and maybe the entire part was, say, tilted at an angle, and therefore it was making contact more on one side. So even with all of the precautions that I took, the material thickness may not have been consistent, or it could have just been sitting on a little piece of sawdust or something, or not quite sitting firmly. Anyway, uh, that shows you just how um, uh, particular or really picky this stuff is. Now, of course, I'm doing such a fine or such a, a shallow scratch pass that little changes really significantly affect the outcome. And that's because with a stainless steel, I don't want to cut too deep. Um, and I can show you what happens if you do try to cut real deep in steel, because I started off on some more cr crude stuff. And um, you can see that these W's, 
I'm not sure if you, let me see if you can get a little closer. It's pretty crude, but there's more black around the um, borders of the text, and there's actually, you feel it, it's, it just feels like sandpaper. Uh, the little burrs don't come off cleanly, and I actually did cut using oil. That's another thing I was going to suggest, is whenever you, just before you get ready to start, put a little drop of oil on the initial, the first letter, where it's going to be, and as the tool cuts across, it will drag that oil, or you can just, you can just put a little bit of oil on the surface of the part, and that'll help lubricate. Um, obviously, for plastic and wood, like, that wouldn't be required, but for stainless, I think it certainly was. Well, on your computer, you can make the, all the program you need to create the text, G-code, um, run on your machine. And I, for simple stuff, really like this online program called JS Cut. And it's SVG based, so any program that makes a vector graphic like perhaps Illustrator, but I use Inkscape, um, just draw your shape and then you can choose different types of operations. So this is actually a simulation of the pocket that I created to put my stainless steel sample in. But I also use this program to make the lettering, and I'll show you how you can do that in Inkscape. Just start by drawing your text. And here, I'm just going to make it bold. Um, you don't have to, but that'll keep in mind that the CNC machine is going to engrave the outside boundary of the text. It's not going to trace the center line. So the thicker the text is, it space out those lines a little bit. It's just something to keep in mind. Now I'm going to set the text height to a quarter of an inch. And now finally, I have to convert this to a path because JS Cut will not accept normal text objects. It wants it to be instead a series of shapes, and that's what Object to Path does. So select the text, Path, Object, Path. And now see if I ungroup this, it's actually just a group or a, a series of individual shapes that are all paths. All right, so it's no longer just text. I can't change the font or whatever anymore. All right, well at this point, I'm going to set the document size, shrink it down to fit my text just so that it shows up nicely once we get into JS cut. And now I'm going to save this file somewhere and open it in JS Cut. So I'll just open up my SVG. There it is. You see the preview. And even though in Inkscape it was treated as a group, well, I guess I did ungroup it, but um, I haven't found a way to select all the text at once in this program. Just have to click each letter, which that only took about 10 seconds. But anyway, now I will create a operation. And what I want to choose is engrave. And then I'll set a depth, which I'll just start at 10 thousandths of an inch. And when I hit generate, it created the yellow lines. And if we jump over to the Simulate tab, you can see, you can almost see the text, but our bit is too big. So remember, I said mine has a um, 0.5 millimeter tip, which is about 0 0.02 inches. You can set it in millimeters or inches, whichever you want. I'll just regenerate this real quick. So that is looking a lot closer to what I would expect. So that should be it for that operation. And then you just set your other parameters. 
is your feed and speed and the vertical you know, plunge direction. And for this stuff, you probably don't have to mess with it at all. You might want to change your output units. For example, I'm going to change mine to inches. And then also, I'm going to put the zero at the lower left, and it'll add some offsets to make that happen. And then whenever you're ready, you can just save this G-code, and it'll put it in your downloads folder. And now I'll show you the program that I use to connect to my CNC machine. I use a Gerbil-based or Arduino-based CNC machine. And this is called CNC.js. It runs in the browser, but there is also a um, terminal command line program that has to run in order to make the link from the serial port to the web browser. And then once it's connected, you can see I have a digital readout and the ability to uh, move my machine, and I'll, here I'll just hit upload, and I will choose the G code file that I made. It should be in my downloads, and there it is. So at this point, you can jog the machine to the start coordinate and click the zero out work offsets on X and Y and then bring your Z down to the final depth and then zero that out and then you can start it. Um, and I recommend using a piece of paper to gauge the depth of your Z. I can show you what I mean by that. So just regular weight copy paper is four thousandths of an inch, which means if you bring the tip of your tool down one thousandth at a time, or just very, very slowly, until you feel the paper start to get grabbed and get pinched. Then you know you're at four thousandths of an inch of air between the tip of the tool and the part. It takes a little bit of a finesse, but it's pretty much like a feeler gauge. I guess you could use a feeler gauge if you wanted to, but the, I used a piece of paper. And then you just compensate for that in your program if your program goes 10,000 steep from the initial height, then that will be 6,000 into the metal because it starts 4,000 in the air. So pretty simple. I want to give a note about the spindle speed. When you're using a V-bit, even if the shaft of the bit is wider, the tip probably is still very, very small and that's the diameter that you use when calculating the spindle speed. And the smaller the tip, the faster the spindle. So for this one, because it is so, 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 so small, it removes such a tiny amount of material with each revolution that in order to keep up, you have to spin it crazy fast. So I have mine set to, well, medium, but this is a 35,000 RPM spindle, so I would, expect that that's about 20 to 25,000 RPM and for as shallow as I was cutting and being probably a little bit conservative it was working very well so yeah spin it very spa very very fast if you're using a, uh, a small v-bit well there's some tips on if you're trying to engrave tough metal like stainless steel obviously any kind of softer metal like brass would probably work great or aluminum so well, thanks for watching.